Hello from lockdown, my name is Matthew Fitzgerald. I'm from Squiz. Squiz is a technology company working with local government in Australia, Europe, the UK, North America, and right here in New Zealand. We understand that communicating during COVID-19 and into recovery is difficult. It's bringing all the usual challenges of crisis communications, plus some interesting new challenges. So we recently talked to Ruben Garcia of Ashburton District Council about the challenges in a smaller agriculturally based district, what's working for them, and his top three tips for local government communicators during this time. So welcome to our first guest. Uh, Ruben Garcia is a communications professional with over 15 years uh, communications experience in uh, local council, who's currently the communications manager at Ashburton District Council. Ruben, welcome. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to talk about some exciting stuff. So Ruben, uh, I would like to hear from you. What are some of the challenges that you are facing uh, as a district in your COVID-19 communications? Uh, no, very good. So I think when we talk about challenges, it's first important to um, identify what the goal is uh, from a council's perspective as it relates to communication. And for us, obviously, probably with, with most other communication departments or in councils around the country, is to make sure that our communication and information is, is getting to as many people as possible in our district. So that's the goal. And how do we do that? Um, we have a multitude of communication channels that we utilize to get our information out because we know that not everybody is going to be checking our website or not everybody's going to be checking our Facebook page or, or some of these other various channels. So uh, part of the goal from our perspective um, is to ensure the consistency of message across all channels. And so where the challenges arise is how do you efficiently keep those channels of communication updated with all the important relevant information um, and, and perhaps in, in the COVID-19 era that we find ourselves living in, um, technology has pretty much risen to the top to some of a great benefit and others who rely perhaps in more traditional means of getting their information, um, they're, they're more or less now forced to try and look at these technological um, communication options to get their source of information. So um, the challenge for us was trying to find how do we create a, a user experience uh, in that technology realm to perhaps cater to those who might be transitioning um, to that platform uh, or tool or technology device um, for the first time? Um, and so that was one of the challenges that we had. And, and, and how do we uh, get there was something that was a really good experience partnering up with uh, Squiz uh, to be able to accomplish that. And out of interest, do you have any idea as to the breakdown of the sort of relative importance to your community of those different communications channels? Absolutely. Um, uh, the numbers are not necessarily in front of me, but um, as with most councils, you'd find in different demographics, uh, perhaps your more uh, rural areas uh, rely more on traditional means of communication, be it your newspaper, uh, radio advertisements, um, we have the benefit of having a, a very successful text alert system, which a, mm. covers a good portion of our community in our district. Um, so, but, but that's used very sparingly and only in, in important information and priority information that we want to get out. Um, so it does vary, um, and it certainly uh, seems to be in, in certain demographics. Um, obviously, your, um, your um, perhaps the easiest way to put it is age demographics. Some, some folks are really comfortable in online tools, while others still prefer these traditional methods. Uh, but I think the, the important thing to note is that um, uh, as counsel, uh, in a communications, um, uh, as of a communications goal, we need to make sure that our, informa our information is getting out to everyone in any one of those channels. In those channels of communications that you have available, I think um, you have to ensure that the message is consistent across all those channels, um, whether it be the newspaper. And sometimes you've got to find ways to uh, um, share the same information but in, in, in different formats. Uh, for example, if you're send, sending out a, 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 a post or a message on Twitter, 
uh, you're limited to certain characters. So how do you capture the essence of your message and link them to appropriate resource? Um, and I think the model that we've used in the Ashburton District Council is, is trying to find a way to centralize our information. So at any one point in time, what we come down to is in the end, where does that information live? Where is that central source of information? Um, because all these other channels need to be able to link back to it. And for us, that's our website. So uh, there is a, a great need to ensuring that your website, regardless of what channel people are interacting with, eventually they're gonna find a way back to that spot. And if that website is not up to date, um, then it becomes an issue. Mm. As a team, obviously, um, you are being forced to work in new ways. What are some of the challenges that COVID-19 communications have uh, placed on you as a team? Absolutely. Uh, so picking up just from what we were just saying about um, uh, making sure that all these communication channels are uh, updated and synchronized in a sense is the question about efficiency. Uh, certainly you've got limited resource perhaps, um, even if you are well staffed, um, th there's only so much a communications team can do um, to making sure that the information is being posted and updated to all these various sources. Um, so uh, the challenge with us in, in doing that, especially in the current COVID-19 um, time that we're you know, challenged with, is utilize technology to find a way to uh, create a central portal of information um, that gathers all this information into one place that is relevant to the COVID-19 um, and make it easy for our users to find that information instead of them digging through our Facebook page. Um, if you go to the council's website, you know, your rubbish uh, and collection information is buried in one side of the site, whereas your inspections and, and stuff like that is, is buried somewhere else. Um, but if any of those essential services that council is providing is spread across multiple areas of your website or multiple areas of your of your communication channels, um, you, in these current when when a crisis occurs, you want to try and consolidate that information because that's what people are after. They're wanting to find out um, the who, what, when, where, why as it relates to my council services. And um, what we were really impressed with um, and in Ashburton was um, we, we saw the um, covid19.govt.nz website that was produced. Um, very simple, very simple, straightforward, uh, no extensive um, fancy design. Um, the priority of information that was being shared was very apparent um, and it consolidated uh, quite a bit of resources that lived elsewhere, but it consolidated into one single page. And it's easy to promote that because you can easily identify, this is a central source of information, go here and you'll find everything you need. Um, and so we kind of took that same kind of mindset and thought, how do we apply what they've done at the national level? And how do we create that similar experience at the local level? Um, and so when you talk about the challenges with the team, uh, it really popped in my mind to think, great, if, if we can create this central portal, um, perhaps 80, 90% of the information on this experienced portal, central landing page of information, we're already producing somewhere else. This is simply consolidating all those resources into one place. So from, from our standpoint, um, there's not much extra effort or work um, required to make that possible. And I think that's what's really fantastic about these different uh, types of technology tools that we have today um, um, to be able to quickly uh, ramp up and put something together um, to meet the, the demands and the needs of, of the community. Uh, they want information, they want it simplified, um, and, and the technology tools available allows us to do that quite efficiently. I think Picking back up on the uh, COVID-19 website, I think one of the most effective things about it uh, is the very simple uh, FAQ section, because there is just such a diversity of information that people are looking for. And the humble FAQ section is just such an easy way that people are sort of trained on uh, to get some of the answers to those really diverse 
Christians. That's right. And, and to be honest with you, when, when people in a crisis like this um, turn to a council's website, um, there's, there's, we can probably list uh, the top priority items that they're coming to the website for. They want to know if their rubbish is going to get collected or their bins are going to get collected and, and in what frequency and in which schedule. And across the country, there's been many changes to how that's being handled currently. Um, counts, uh, the, early on, before we went into a level four, there was a level two and level three. Uh, there was questions about uh, council facilities. Uh, that's an obvious question. Um, now that it, we're in a lockdown, while council, uh, most of council is working remotely um, to offer some of these services still, there's questions about inspections. I had an inspection scheduled. How is that going to work, the booking and so on and so forth? There's building consent questions that come up. Um, we even have a lot of folks interested in our district about public meetings because we live stream our meetings. People want to still stay in the know as to how business is still being conducted. So um, in a crisis situation, um, you know that you have all these commonly uh, asked questions um, and you refer to it as an FAQ on the COVID site, which is fantastic. So, so why not consolidate all those resources into a single landing page and, and, and put it out there right in front uh, so that folks don't have to be um, diving through our website to find these relevant pages. Uh, simply, they can um, self-service themselves, essentially, by having this information available in a single landing spot. And, and if there's more information that you need to elaborate on, uh, for example, rubbish in our area, uh, there's quite a bit of detail there what we've done. And you probably can't summarize it in a sentence or two, but you link them off to that source. And again, this provides a good launching point uh, utilizing that FAQ kind of a format uh, because those are the glaring things people are wanting to know. Mm. So you have uh, made reference to a, a number of the technologies that you are using, um, including the Squiz uh, PWA. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what the Squiz PWA offers you sort of over and above your existing comms, um, comms channels? Sure, absolutely. Uh, when we think about communication channels, um, I, I think the question sometimes comes up about duplicity, um, but we really look at it in terms of making sure that we have the maximum coverage possible. Um, if somebody's not on one channel, they'll at least get the information on another channel. So the more channels, um, the more manageable channels that we can effectively have uh, to support our communication, um, is, I think is important. Um, but with that said, you, you do have to be very careful in trying to introduce new channels, because if you don't have the, um, the resource or the, um, um, the, the, the consistency of, of producing content for those channels, it's not going to work. Um, it, you won't build audiences in those particular channels. So we were very careful in trying to consider whether or not um, Squiz's PWA would be of any benefit to us. And I think what um, we recognize to be extremely valuable for us is to um, provide a single landing page or, 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 or even on a mobile device, uh, a portal, if you will, of your local information all in one place. Um, and those resources, and why choose the, a PWA type of a solution, is because most of the work has already been done. We've already posted this information elsewhere. Um, the PW, Squizz's PWA allows us to integrate through RSS feed and other different things, um, content uh, into, this, into this experience, into this single landing page environment. Uh, that's already been created. We don't have to duplicate that information. So my team's happy because if, from an efficiency standpoint, they don't need to waste their time inputting in yet another channel or trying to make sure that another channel is, is continually being updated. That information is already feeding in. And a good example of that, uh, if you look at our PWA, um, we have a section there for all the latest COVID-19 news. Uh, that's simply pulling the news from our website. So it's the same process that we have in place. We're not replicating any additional work by trying to add it to the PWA. It's automatically being fed into that 
to that portal. Uh, the other thing is is our council uh, mayor uh, um, and uh, chief executive have been doing regular video updates to the community, which have been which have been quite viral uh, to some extent um, because people want that uh, people appreciate that raw sense of information delivery. Well, that's embedded into the PWA. We have a specific YouTube playlist that only has the COVID-19 related videos and, and that's embedded into that PWA. So that is automatically updated. We don't have to touch it. We don't have to keep going back into it. The thing that we do um, update and track because we want a really strict control of what's being uh, displayed is as you referred to earlier, the FAQs. Because those uh, topical um, things uh, that are in people's mind change you know, from day to day. So we want to make sure that we're constantly revisiting what is the, what is the most interest. And again, I keep going back to rubbish um, and, and collection services um, uh, keeps coming up. It's because we're, uh, as of this recording, we're on um, coming up to Easter weekend. And so there's a lot of interruption or change of schedule as it relates to rubbish. So again, it's just trying to, um, the balance of whether or not um, committing to um, um, contributing new information that's relevant, but have it not be so uh, burdensome on the team, uh, but maximizing on the technology's ability to integrate and bring in content that you've already created so you don't have to recreate it. And that's one of the biggest things that we've been really excited about um, because um, it, it, it offers us the ability to have um, a really good user experience, a landing page that is similar to the COVID-19 GOVT.NZ website. Um, so folks are familiar to seeing it in that format and fashion, um, which I think speaks to, to, um, to having a really good consistency of how we're trying to communicate with folks. Um, and at the same time, uh, having it uh, be an effective tool that people can use on their desktop, on their tablets, on their uh, mobile devices, having the technology be able to conform to those different formats. I think it's really important. It can't be clunky. It can't be messy. Um, um, it's got to be clean, sharp, um, and straight to the point. So, Ruben, with the benefits of um, 15 years experience uh, in comms roles across local councils, what are your top three tips for uh, local government communicators as you know, we move from lockdown level four to the you know, slightly uh, messier, more confusing uh, lockdown levels of uh, two and three and people struggle to understand you know, what, is, uh, what is open, what is not, what is allowed, what is not? Absolutely. I think probably any communication uh, professional will tell you um, is, is keep comms consistent um, so that the consistency in communication and putting out information, uh, however little or however big the, the information might be, is important in not only um, getting the word out, but also to build your audience. Um, we're very fortunate that for the past year and a half, uh, we've implemented a model uh, by which the sole purpose of this model and how we post out information or news or articles or uh, Facebook posts versus media releases, um, it's more of a, a formula that we use to ensure that it's consistently uh, turning. And, and what that has allowed us to do is build the audience. Um, so in any time you try and um, um, uh, get information out, um, that's being shared, liked, um, and, and, and um, forwarded to somebody else. They like it and share it. Next thing you know, uh, they're liking our page because, oh, that was really good, helpful information. So tip number one, uh, keep turning out information. Uh, don't only rely in these crisis situations to build your audience. I think you need to be building your audience way in advance. And we're very fortunate, I think, because we, we, we had that in place. And so our communication channels today are quite strong um, that we can benefit from people being informed. Uh, tip number two is um, certainly with the channels that you introduce uh, and considering the idea of, of the turning of content more frequently is uh, make sure you don't overcommit yourself. 
um, if you don't have the staff and the resource to um, um, support these channels, uh, then don't go into them because the last thing you want is to have folks follow channels or feeds that are uh, that rarely uh, that people rarely hear from you, um, and that's not um, that's not uh, at all productive. And the last tip I would say, probably especially during these times, be transparent. Uh, I think as communicators, especially in local government, uh, we want to make sure that you know the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted and the language is perfect and this that and the other. Um, but I think that at, at the end of the day, we there are human beings all the, on the other end of council um, that think and, and uh, feel just as much as everybody else. And sometimes it's okay to put out uh, that uh, or portray that authenticity, um, whether it's a, a raw video with your mayor or your uh, chief executive. Um, uh, get the information out, be transparent, share what you can share, uh, even sometimes what's really helpful that we've learned is that in over the years, as long as people need to know that we're working towards something, we might not know what that solution is, uh, but we are working towards it. And sometimes that alone is very helpful for, for people and to um, ease their in anxieties in, in a lot of cases. Ruben, that was absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Um, if uh, there are some local uh, government communicators out there who are struggling at this time, uh, is there a way they can reach out to you to sort of ask for oh, your yeah. guidance during this time? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm sure you can uh, share my information on this uh, screen here. Um, you can uh, contact me probably via email would be uh, the first point of contact. And I'm always happy to chat because I think that uh, during these times it's really refreshing or encouraging to kind of catch up with colleagues in the same field to to learn from each other like i alluded to the covid-19 website we we took the lead from them and what the work that they've done um i've called called some colleagues of mine in the in the neighboring district to understand how he was doing his video stuff you know so anything helps um because most likely um, uh, we don't have to carry the burden of, of inventing something new. Uh, we have the great privilege of copying any good idea in government. Ruben, thank you. Absolutely. And if you're interested in using the Squiz PWA to solve some of your own communication challenges, in particular, giving residents a single place to go for information, get in touch. The Squiz PWA can be deployed within 12 hours and ready for you to load your localized content. For a three minute video, which explains what is available in the PWA, click on the link on screen to go to that video. Thanks. And remember, while you're taking care of your communities, remember to take care of yourself. See you again.